Saving is a critical step in Photoshop, so let's see how to do it safely. To start, open this image from the tutorial practice files. Now let's make a change to this file. Let's move this small inset photo to somewhere else in the image. To do that, go to the Tools panel and click on the first tool, the Move tool, and then move into the image, click right on the small bouquet photo, and drag it somewhere else in the image. I'll just put it here. You can put it anywhere you like. By the way, if that didn't work for you, it's probably because you're not on the right layer. We'll learn a lot more about selecting a layer later in the tutorial series, but for now, you can avoid that problem by just going over to the Layers panel and making sure that you have the small bouquet layer highlighted, and then try dragging that bouquet again. Now that we've made a change to the image, let's see what happens if we use the Save command to save the image with that change. I'll go up to the File menu, and I'll choose Save. And what happened is that Photoshop went right ahead and saved over and replaced the last version of this image, in this case, the original file that we started with. And that's something you don't often want to do. So let me show you a safer way to save that doesn't save over the last version. Let's make another change. Again, with your Move tool selected, click on that small bouquet photo and move it somewhere else in the image. I'll put mine down here, but you can put yours anywhere. Go up to the File menu, and this time, don't choose Save. Instead, choose Save As. That opens this Save As dialog, where you can avoid saving over the last version of your file by doing something different, like changing the file name or choosing a different location to which to save the file. By the way, if you're on Windows, this dialog box may look slightly different. It does offer the same options that we'll talk about, but they're just arranged slightly differently. So what I'm going to do to avoid saving over the last version of this image is to give this version a new name. I'll go to the Save As field here. That's the File Name field if you're on Windows. And I'll click just to the right of the name before the .psd extension. And I'm going to type hyphen v2 for version 2. Now if I were to come down and click Save, although I'm not going to do that just yet, I'd end up with two files, the last saved version of the file and this changed version. So that's a simple way to protect your last save version, which is sometimes your original, of an image. Before we do click Save, let's take a look at another important thing in this Save As dialog. That's the Format menu here on a Mac. It's called the Save As Type menu on Windows. It's a good idea to save your files in the native Photoshop format, which gives them a .psd extension while you're working on them. To do that, choose Photoshop from this drop-down menu, and if you have layers in your file, as we do, make sure that the Layers box is checked. The big advantage of saving as a PSD is that it will preserve any layers or other editable Photoshop features that you may have added to the image so that you can come back and work with those again later. But you can't see a .psd file on the web, and if you're sharing it with someone who doesn't have Photoshop, they might not be able to open a .psd file, a Photoshop file. So, if you want to share an image that you've worked on in Photoshop, I suggest you save another copy of it in addition to the .psd and save that copy in the JPEG format. The JPEG file could be posted online, it will be smaller to send by email, and it will keep any photos in an image looking good. So, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to my Format menu, and I'll choose JPEG. And then I'll go down to the bottom right and click Save. That triggers this small window of JPEG options. I suggest you just leave these at their defaults and click OK. Finally, here are a couple bonus tips about saving. First, save often. Don't wait until you're done to save a file you're working on. Second, save early. This is especially important if you've created a new file from scratch with the new command, because until you do save, that file hasn't been permanently saved to your system and could be lost if your computer crashes.